when you don't know how to describe and when your scientific knowledge is inadequate to what you, quote, know in your feelings and intuitions. Stories of birth, of rebirth, death, of the loss of paradise. Every people in the world with stories on the loss of paradise. Conflict with the deities, universal. The unconscious, every single people in the world have dealt with the unconscious. You know what they've called it? Of course, they've called it the underworld. What better term could anyone invent than that, the underworld? And what a modern fairy story teller calls the place of the wild things. Think of that, poetry in a modern American fairy tale teller. He calls it the place of the wild things. Slaying the monsters, heroes, always everywhere. Finding the right way, finding the path. Scapegoats, natural catastrophes. The flood is known everywhere all around the world. And fires famines, sibling rivalry, no group without it. And wait till we get to those fairy tales right away. You know the sibling rivalry in the fairy tales. They're dealing with things from that deep past that Thomas Mann was talking about, that sibling rivalry. And then you get into incest everywhere in the world. Father murderers, mother murderers, children murderers, mother seekers, father seekers, cannibalism. I talked to you about the brain cannibals. Cannibalism through how many hundreds of thousands of those years. Male, female dominance, the youngest child, these are a few. Joseph Campbell says that the function of myths are these, to explain the universe. You don't know how to do it scientifically, but somehow or other you know. So you develop a story like the one that I read to you this morning from Genesis that explains the universe. And if you're a human being, even the most primitive, you want to know what's around you and how it came to be, and you'll describe it somehow. And all over the world, they described it in their own poetic ways and essentially in the same way. Your myths help to hold people together. They give you a sense of belonging, and so we have our little mythologies in this church, our little rituals. And and our mythology should be much stronger so that we be more of a people. But every people, including the Christian religion and all the other religions, have used their myths to hold the people together. And then, of course, to give comfort and courage because you can't live without it. And so we tell stories of the past so that you'll know that it was managed by your fathers and it can be managed by you. And in the telling of the story, together in a church or around a campfire, we remind each other that we are here to help. And we've got all our fathers there to help with us. And then fourthly, he says, myths are for the handling of guilt. And this I won't get to until the end of my series because I think it's probably the most difficult and dangerous of all the concepts and, and the most important perhaps of use of all the myths to handle our guilt because guilt is a universal thing. We didn't invent it. We didn't invent it purposely. It wasn't something we wanted. And it's universal. And it wouldn't go on from generation to generation unless there was some really fundamental basic origin for it that lay beyond all conscious life. At least that seems to me reasonable. 
So you see, essentially myth describes poetically what we know subconsciously or intuitively or instinctively. And myth describes that in a way that enables us to avoid it if we wish to. Ultimately, it seems to me that the scientific description can replace myths, for we can understand scientifically what we have all these thousands of years only intuited or felt. We now have, I think, the techniques with which to explore, and anything that's stated mythologically can be stated factually and scientifically. But I believe as well that the poetic form of knowing, the poetic form of knowing and understanding is immensely persuasive and artistic and um, artistically and emotionally valuable. Develop our science as we will and can and must. I still do not believe that we would want to dispense with our poetry and our mythology.